okay so this is how your bw journey has been started the latest version is 7.4 okay let's move to the next one we know very well what is an erp we have already discussed in our demo classes erp stands for enterprise resource planning and is it only sap is providing erp packages in the world worldwide market no we have a big competitor for sap that is called oracle apps jd edwards peoplesoft ban civil crm microsoft dynamics these are all the companies a competitor for sap erp but all these companies have only a 35 percent of market in worldwide sap has around 65 percent of market so we can call sap is a leader of erp so why ERP we need to use to accurate the process in your business to reduce the cost of your product to automate the process for example ATM okay now the question is why SAP has been introduced so many functional modules we have so many functional modules like let's take for example we have a SD sales and distribution MM material and marketing then we have a SEM supply chain management service relationship management, plan maintenance, they're, they're, it's like goes up. So there are so many modules are available. Why SAP has come up with these many applications? What purpose? Do they want to make a business for selling these applications? Or really is these applications are going to help any kind of business? So let's talk about first. SAP, before introducing all these applications, they have done a good research for each and every single business in worldwide market. Then, they, after research, they have come up with a plan for every business, what are the requirements, how the business is running. Then, how we can help this business to run automation, to run the business smoothly without any problems. Then, what are the applications they need? So, with what are the business units or departments each business has, each company has. For every business unit, what application we can provide them which helps them to run their business smoothly. After doing all this research, they come up with a list of applications which really going to help the business. Let's find out whether it's really going to help the business. For example, if you take any kind of business, okay, so there are, there are two types of things we can do in a business, either buy or sell. Okay, there are major two things, either you can buy the product or you can sell the product. But if you want to sell the product, there is one more option called where you can make the product. So there are two types of business out there, buying, selling and making the product. Now let's talk about, for example, I have a manufacturing unit. I want to run this manufacturing unit. So how I can start my business? First thing, you need to decide what you want to manufacture. Let's say that I want to manufacture iPhone. Okay, what do you want for this? First thing is I need a raw material. What do you need? I need to buy the raw material. Okay, if you want to buy the raw material, you need to start raising or creating a purchase order. I need to create a purchase order, send this purchase order to my raw material supplier is nothing but vendor okay when I send this purchase order to the vendor this vendor is providing a raw material for me okay then once I receive my raw material I need to start managing this one that is called MM material management this is where your material management module comes to the picture okay so like this I have a many vendors then I need to start managing my vendor information Supply relationship management, supply chain management, service relationship management, there are two types of, okay, uh, it's like a, a name is same, but the application is same, but the name is different. Uh, supply chain management or you can call service relationship management. So I need to start managing all my vendor details, then I need application. This is the second module comes to the picture, okay. Now I have a raw material, I start manufacturing that. If I start making this particular product, then it is happens only in the factory then i need to start managing my plant factory that is called plant maintenance production planning 
that's what the next SAP module comes to the picture. Then warehouse management, quality management, these are all belongs to your inventory. Please observe each and every step how these modules come to the picture, how these modules are really going to help your business. Once you're done manufacturing your product, then I need to start selling. If I want to sling the product, I need to start looking for customer, right? To selling the customer the product, it is called sales and distribution. The sales and distribution come to the picture here. I have so many customer, I need to start managing my customer data. That is called customer relationship management. Your CRM comes to the picture. When the customer pay money to me, I need to manage my financial status or financial information. Then I need a, another application called FICO. That is called your financial purpose. When I'm getting a money from the customer, I call it is a FIAR. It's a finance account, account receivable. I'm getting a money from the customer. When I'm paying the money to my vendor, this is called account payable. FIAP. So, this is a how each and every single SAP modules is going to fit into a business. It is going to help this business to run that process very smoothly. This is a reason why SAP come up with a list of modules. Clear guys? Let's move to the next topic. So we keep talking about data. Without data there is no business warehouse or SAP BW. What is a data? Any idea what is a data? A data is nothing but all real raw facts and figures is called data. Processing the data is called information. The technology to process the data is called information technology. What is the real facts and figures? If you purchase something, for example, I'm purchasing a product called, for example, let's say uh, I'm purchasing a cheese packet. It is a fact. I'm paying $10. It is a figure. Real raw facts and figures is called data. To process the data is called information. The technology or computers I'm going to use to process the data is called information technology. Then what is a data warehousing? I call my SAP BW as a data warehousing tool. What is a data warehousing? It is a subject oriented, integrated, non-volatile and time variant collection of data in support of decision making which is a very standard definition or a, tradition de a traditional definition for your data warehousing. What do you mean by subject oriented? Let's talk about one by one. A subject oriented is nothing but I'm going to talk about a subject here. When I'm, when I'm dealing a data with the computer uh, uh, related to the customer, that is a subject oriented. Customer is a subject oriented. I'm dealing a data with the products. A product is a subject oriented. I'm dealing the data with the material, it is a subject oriented. So in data warehousing, I am dealing data which is a subject oriented always. Okay, that is a subject oriented. What is the integrated? Integrated is nothing but I'm going to integrate my data warehousing solution with most of the third party systems. Okay, that is called integrated. What does it mean? Integrates in the sense the data is available in the data source in the database So I need to connect to the data source from the BW system Then I need to extract the data from the data source various of data sources into BW system Data from the different subjects can also be integrated So what does it mean by integrated exactly here? See for example, I have a customer data. I have a product data When I have a transaction data the customer is purchasing the product Customer data is separate and product data is separate. When I want to do the, when I want to see the transaction data, the customer and product data has been involved. It has been merged. Then only the transaction data will be created. Without customer, there is no transaction. Without product, there is no transaction data. So I need to integrate the different subjects here. Customer is one subject and product is one subject. I'm integrated two different subjects then I'm getting a meaningful information. For each subject data, we maintain one info cube. We're going to talk about this info cube in coming session. For time being, please understand that info cube is a data target. Okay, data from different places or sources can be extracted and summarized. Data from different subjects can be also integrated. A info cube is also called data mart. 
okay what is a non volatile non volatile means data once you load into data warehousing system or bw system cannot be changeable why it is not why we cannot change the data after loading into bw the reason because whatever the data is available in the data source when i am loading this data into bw system i don't want to change this the reason because if i change at the bw level there is no meaning of the data for example let's say in a data i have a file called excel sheet there i have a transaction data i have a 10 transaction out of this 10 transactions i got 10000 rupees that is a real cash i want to load this data into bw after loading this data into bw if i make this 10 10000 as a 20000 but actually how much amount i have in my hand 10000 only but if you change to 20000 do you think that i am going to get additional 10000 here no what is that that's a completely wrong data so you going to change the data there is no use of that when there is no use of that why you want to change the data that's the reason they said that once you load the data into bw it is not changeable it should be as it is how you extracting the data from the data source okay so now you need to understand here what is a data source a data source is nothing but where the data originally created and stored it might be database it might be flat file it might be excel it might be microsoft access or cybase or db2 lab 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 anything this is a places where the data is there i want to get the data into my bw system that is called data source source of the data very simple english when i extract the data into bw from the data source i don't want to change the data because if you change the data there is no meaning of that it's completely wrong data whatever is there actual amount it should be same amount in a bw also that is called non volatile what is a time variant time variant is always it is stores only historical data as we said earlier when we discussing about in a demo session there are two systems oltp olap oltp stands for online transaction processing system which is your erp which contains a present data current data olap stands for online analytical processing system which is your sap bw system or data warehousing system which contains always old data historical data what purpose it contains only old data historical data to do the data analysis i should have the old data then only i can do the analysis otherwise it is not possible present data you do analysis you'll get only what happening today what happening for the last 3 months one quarter what happening for the last financial year then i should have the old data the place where we integrate the subject oriented historical data which cannot be changeable and which helps you to take a better business decisions is called data warehouse this is a complete information of data warehouse okay now let's talk about how the data will be loading into bw if you want to load or extract the data into bw there are certain layers in the architecture of sap bw which helps bw to load this process loading process to run smoothly step by step that is called layers of bw bw has a different layers which are responsible for reliable data acquisition and data processing along with robust analytical capabilities so what are the layers i have let's say that we clearly told you that the data always available in the data sources so basically i have a two main data sources one is sap data source nothing but your sap erp another one is non sap data source non sap data source falls like any database oracle sql microsoft excel microsoft access any kind of database 
or any kind of data in a flat files we call non sap data sources which is not sap sap data source is your erp and there is a one more also one bw system will be data source for another bw system okay because it has a data it can provide the data so i can call it is also a data source okay now you've identified that there is a data in the data sources different different data sources i have then what i need to do first i need to load this data into bw system the first step i'll create a info info package which is called modeling object when i create info package then this is called extraction layer what this info package is doing here it is extracting the data from the data source into bw that is called retrieval of the data okay then after loading the data what happens after extracting the data the data will be stored in a place called psa stands for persistence staging area it is called staging layer this is the first place where the data comes and stores for temporarily that is called data source the next level is a transformation what is a transformation layer a transformation is basically it will be converted the data from the source format into the destination format what is the source format for example i am getting a data from excel excel is always contains dot csv format so csv format will not be understand by bw then what happens the transformation will be converted the csv format into bw format then sends the data to bw target that is a transformation not only for this purpose i can still restrict what number of data or what type of data can be stored into the data target so i can restrict the data here for example i have 100 records in the data source but when i reach here i can only take 10 records and i can send this 10 records to my data target that is called transformation i am restricting the data what data is supposed to be loaded okay this loading data to the data target will take care by another tool called dtp data transfer process once the data reach to the data target this is a final stage where the data will be reached to the bw after this i need to send this data for reporting purpose so we have an integrated reporting tool called bex okay what happens is the fourth step is loading layer after loading layer the reporting layer next reporting layer contains all your bex tool bex stands for business explorer it is a suite of a group of tools it contains bex query designer where i do all the major report designing here then if you want to see the output in a desktop based i have a bex analyzer which is called your ms excel integrated with ms excel which the user can see that this is called desktop based query preview if you want to preview the report in the web based a portal then the data after creating from the bex it's supposed to send to the web application designer a separate tool we also call this is a vad i do designing required for web based reporting then i can send this data for preview purpose in the portal that is called web analyzer a portal is nothing but your internet explorer or google chrome or firefox anything you can use only for preview purpose okay if you want a web based that is your portal if you want desktop based that is your excel which user can connect and view the reporting this is how the data will be moved from step by step in your sap bw these are the layers which helps to move the data till the reporting part first one is extraction layer staging layer transformation layer loading layer reporting layer okay let's see what exactly extraction layer 
Extraction layer is related to the extraction process which collect the data from the source system. We have a different types of source systems are available. Those are SAP systems, databases, web services, data services, flat files. Staging layer. Extracted data will be stored temporarily. The stored source data from different operational sources. Pre-process data for cleansing before calculations or aggregations based on your business requirement. It is also called as Persistent Staging Area, PSA. The first place where the data will be stored in a BW after extraction. The transformation layer. The transformation is lay nothing but consolidation, cleaning, integration of data to synchronize technically and semantically. What is the purpose of this? It converts the data from source data format into destination data format. Data transformation can also involve data mapping, application of custom transformation program and formulas. What does it mean? By using these formulas, by using this transformation program, I can restrict what type of data I can send it to my data target. That is called transformation. Loading layer. The process of adding transform data to the data targets is calling loading process. A data transfer process, DTP, transforms the data based on the parameters defined between the source and data targets. Finally, reporting layer. Where the data is presented in the different forms such as reports, dashboards, charts, pie charts, etc. This layer allows you to perform analysis on the data stored in the BW. Okay. Apart from that, we have a BW accelerator. It is a separate tool. We can say it is an add-on tool for your BW which will help only to improve the query performance. Okay. We used to use this tool in our older days. Not it is almost out of date after HANA comes to the picture. Now, if you compare with the HANA with this, it, there are a lot of differences are there. What is the purpose of this tool? If you want to run your queries more faster way, then I need to use this tool called BW Accelerator. What is this actually? It is a separate server which uses SAP Trex engine. Okay? And it is required of creation indexes on your info cube or data models. This is a better tool which help you to do all the stuff. But only problem is it is very expensive to manage because a separate server, not integrated with the BW. Then what happens is how you can say it is very expensive because if we have one BW server, I can connect to only one BW accelerator server. If you have a multiple BW servers, I need to purchase a multiple license of BW accelerator, which is very expensive. This is the reason most of the companies they said that they're not going for BWA. And moreover, it is a very difficult to manage also. It is a very old dated, outdated tool. Okay. What I can do in a SAP BW? You can do majorly three functions. One is data modeling, data extraction, reporting creation, or information presentation. These are the three major functions you can perform in a BW side. Okay. So what is the data modeling first? Okay. Before knowing data modeling, you should know what is a data mart. What is a data mart? A data mart is a small data warehouse a specific to a domain. For example, if you take a pie chart here, I have a pieces of in a pie chart. So every piece belongs to one business unit or one business department. Okay. This every piece contains that particular business data. So it is a data source. It is a data warehouse, a small data warehouse. Okay. These small data warehouses, I can call data mart, which belongs to a particular business. For example, let's say, this belongs to finance. This belongs to market, HR, sales data. So if you are managing the data separate location, that is called data mart. 
we have two types of data mods dependent data mod independent data mod what is a data marching when you have a data mod the process of preparing managing securing the data mod is called data marting don't get confusion here data mod is different data marting is different data mod is to only to store the data related to a particular business but marting is how to store the data how to prepare the data how to manage how to secure that is called data mod i can say it is a completely administration of your data that is called data marting data mining the process of retrieving the data from the data mod or from the central or corporate data warehouse nothing but extraction is called data mining in a fastest and simple and possible way is called data mining what is a erm entity relationship modeling now the question is when i have a sap erp system why i cannot create reports why i want to use sap bw this is a major question a lot of people is going to ask so i have erp system i have a data in this day to day transaction is coming and storing here why i need a separate tool called bw why only we can create data we can create reports in a bw only why not in a erp what is the difference in between the bw and erp if you ask me the straight forward question yes it is possible to create reports on erp side in a day to day transaction system it is possible but the major problem is it is not meant for data analysis it is only to store your day to day transaction data one side if you getting a data incoming data other side you cannot extract the data for the reporting you cannot display the reports there will be more loading on your server the server performance will be impact okay then what is the other difference you can say your sap erp supports erm modeling entity relationship modeling your sap bw support multi dimensional modeling okay what is a erp modeling erm modeling what is a multi dimensional modeling what is the difference in between this erm modeling is entity relationship entity is nothing but it might be any object customer vendors material plants is called entities the relationship between these entities called entity relationship modeling every entity maintains its own attributes these attributes are mapped to a database table a table is a structure of consisting set of rows and columns the intersection of rows and columns is called cell the attributes in the table cell is called field the sequence of field is called header or structure of the record every field contains a field name data type length the decimal places called metadata metadata is nothing but structure of the table without data okay this is called entity relationship modeling so here the customer is related with the product okay there are two types of erms one to one one to many what is a one to one one to many let's take for example i have a customer here okay then i have a product here a one customer can purchase a multiple products so it is a one to many okay one product can be purchased by the multiple customers so it is also one to many so one to one one to many where is a one to one for example one sales office can contain multiple customers for example i have a big bazaar in hyderabad amir pet area then i have only one showroom in that area but many customers okay then i can say one to many there is no many many showrooms here many to many it says one to many this is a relationship this is a entity relationship one person can do anything one person can do only one thing this is called entity relationship so completely your erp depended on entity relationship i cannot do multi dimensional modeling what is a multi dimensional modeling a multi dimensional modeling is nothing but 
it is like a multiple dimension tables it's like a cubes we can call where i can divide the data into the parts for example i can keep customer data into one dimension product data into another dimension material data into another dimension okay then i can connect all these dimensions that is called multi dimensional modeling what is the purpose of this to better performance to create reports in faster way what is the best example you can give me for multi dimensional modeling then i can give you for example most of you people knows what is a paper weight on lot of your office tables you have a paper weights most of the paper weights will be crystal like for example you have a cube which is a paper weight is a cube shape and take this paper weight and look at through the cube in a photo which is hanging on your wall if you just moving this cube from one dimension to another dimension you can do you can see the different photographs which is available on the wall more than one why because every dimension it is displaying one photograph but actually how many photographs are there in the wall it is only one physically but virtually you can see multiple the same way i have a data into one table customer data product data material data transaction data when i want to retrieve any particular thing i have to go through the one by one so there will be little uh, performance issue comes to the picture here what in case if i divide the customer data into one place product data into one place material data into one place then employee data into another place i can connect all this data to my transaction data this is called multi dimensional modeling which look like a star we also call it is a star schema your multi dimensional modeling always depends on star schema or extended star schema we have a separate class for info cube at the time we going to discuss more about your multi dimensional modeling and star schema for time being please observe uh, please understand your erp supports entity relationship modeling your bw supports multi dimensional modeling if you open let me go show you this how your bw look like how to log on to the bw first okay if you log on to your remote server you have a multiple files available on your desktop there is a one file or icon called sap logon we call it is a sap log launch pad in this it will display list of the servers available for sap since we are working with the bw we have a bw server and we have a ecc or erp server so if you want to log on to bw first you need to select a bw then click on log on it will going to ask you what is your username and password select it please enter your username and password press enter it will take you to screen called sap easy access which also called home page or welcome page and if you observe that there is a one field this is called transaction code area what is a transaction code your sap bw completely depends on the transaction codes what exactly transaction code here a transaction code is nothing but it's a letters like for example rsa1 whenever you want to go to a particular screen inside your bw it you have to enter a transaction code which will take you to the particular screen it is nothing but opening a screen see right now i am in a home page i have not enter into the bw if you want to enter into the bw obviously i need to enter a transaction code the first and foremost basic transaction code is going to be rsa1 don't get panic panic about your transaction codes here these are all very simple day to day when you practicing this classes it will become more easy for you to remember the transaction code it is a very simple to remember but once you start working then only will understand what is a transaction code no need to buy hard these things okay now please enter rsa1 enter click on enter button it will take you to your bw screen please observe it will display data warehousing workbench modeling screen it is called modeling screen okay your rsa1 transaction code it doesn't have any standard screen 
please observe here it has taken me to the open hub destination screen this is called open up destination can you see here it is open open up destination don't don't bother about what is open up destination i'm telling you i have so many options are there why it is coming to here only the reason because before closing my sap bw previously i was working on this that's the reason when i enter rsa1 it will take you to that particular screen which was working in the previously before closing let me show you one thing let me take info providers okay for example i am working on this simply i will say display data execute i can see something go back go back please observe right now i am working on info provider screen if i close my bw log on back again enter your username and password now please enter rsa1 it will take you where you were working previously before closing your bw i was working in info provider screen now it is going to take me to same info provider screen please observe here it is info provider earlier it was open up destination so there is no standard screen for your rsa1 rsa1 always take you to where you left your work before closing your bw but it is a standard first basic transaction code once you come here your bw screen once you log on please observe i have a certain functionalities here modeling administration transport connection documents bi content translation metadata repository okay so now we need to talk about what is this each and everything is displaying here what is the purpose of one by one so first when you talking about modeling we need to say first what is the modeling a modeling is very important selection of your data warehousing workbench because we use this modeling screen for creation of or modification of any objects available in bw if you want to start designing of your bw i need to go to the modeling screen now the question is why should i do modeling in bw this is a major question why i need to do modeling what is the modeling first thing you need to understand here bw when i purchase a license from sap it is a blank there won't be any data but we know that there is a back end one database either it might be oracle or sql or hana it is your database is also blank now what i need to do i need to get the data from the data source for example i have excel this excel contains certain data for example i have rows and columns here it contains a customer number customer name customer age for example 1 2 for example a b age is 10 and 20 i want to load this data into my bw when i load this data the data will be stored in the database only but you need to load this data through the bw front end system now the thing is actually how to load the data how to load the data first what i need to do i need to start looking for the data what type of data it is there are two types of data available master data transaction data what is the difference in between these two a master data is nothing but a data which we use only for display purpose which never changes this is called master data what is example customer name do you think the customer name will be changing keep changing his name no customer phone number customer address this address and phone numbers changes once in a while not but free, not frequently so what is a master data master data is nothing but a data which we use only for display purpose what is a display purpose i say who is this customer this customer name is kiran 
his age is this, his phone number is this, his email address is this, his ad address is this. I am giving an information about the customer. Okay, that is called master data and which never changes frequently, which we cannot use for calculation purpose. That is called master data. What is a transaction data? A transaction data is nothing but which changes frequently, which we can use for calculation purpose. What is the example? Your petrol price, which will be keep changing in India, fluctuations every day, up and down, which I can use for calculation purpose. 1 liter is 100 rupees, 2 liters is 200 rupees. I'm using a cal I'm doing some calculation here. That is called transaction data. Now first you need to identify what type of data I'm loading. If you take this data, this data is master data because it contains a customer number, name, age, which I cannot do any calculations on this. Now I want to load this data into BW, okay? I want to load this data into BW. I have here customer number, name, age, okay? Let's take this. I have a table here. This table contains some data. So when I want to load this data, I have my database. In this database, which is a blank, there is no data. There is no data available in this database. So how do we need to load the data? First thing, one, two, A, B, okay? Let's say that I have age 10 here, 20 here. Let's say, for example, I'm loading this customer number one, two here. Let's say one. I'm loading customer number two. I'm loading customer number one name, customer number two name. Now, please tell me, if I bring any third person to this class, if I ask him, what is this data? He says, sir, this is a customer number, this is a customer name, this is a customer age. Okay, if I ask him, what is this? He will say, it is a one, it is a two, it is a B, A, it is a B. Why? It is the same data. Here, whatever data is here, it is the same data. Here also. Why, why he is not able to identify this, what type of data? What is the reason? The reason because it doesn't have a proper structure. There is no header. Without header, I cannot tell you what is this data. Here, it contains a proper header. Customer number, customer name, customer address. Then I can say, this is a customer number. Here, I don't have header. I cannot tell you what type of data is this. What is it is? There is no meaning of the data. So what did you identify here? If I load the data blindly, without the header or without the structure, there is no meaning for this data. So then what you need to do? First, I need to create the structure in a BW side. What structure you want to create? First, I want to create customer number. Then I will add the data. Then I need to create customer name. Then I need to create the same structure as it is my data source. Please observe here what I am doing. I am designing a table here. Where are you designing this table? I am designing this table in the BW. When the data loads, data will be stored under this particular columns. It is in the database. So what are you doing here? I am designing a table in the database also. So what you need to understand here, what is a modeling? The modeling is nothing but designing of your database. It's called modeling. I don't know what is the data here. I don't know what data here it is contained. Whenever the data is supposed to be loaded into BW, I need to identify how many columns are there, that many columns are supposed to create in BW. When I create in a BW side, automatically in the backend database system, it will be created a table with the same structure. Automatically, whenever I load the data, the data will be loaded in the backend according to the structure. So, what you're doing the creation of this? What is the purpose of creation of this? To load the data. Okay. When I create this structure, when I load this data, the structure will be created in the database also. The data will store in the database. So, finally, I'm doing a modeling to design my database in the backend. So, what is the modeling? A modeling is nothing but designing of the database. 
So if you want to start designing of database, you need to use certain tools called info objects, info object catalog, info areas, info cubes, DSOs, etc. This is called modeling tools. Guys, is it clear for everyone? Dinesh, Raj, Prasad? I think Sureka left. Yes. Yeah, Kiran, everything is clear. So, you need to understand here why I'm doing a modeling, which is a very important. If you don't have this clarity, you can you, you, we cannot do blindly simply closing our eyes doing doing a modeling. We need to first understand that BW is a blank. I want to load the data into BW from the data source. Now I need to find out what is the data you are giving to me. Either it's a ma master data or transaction data. How many columns it has? That many columns I need to create in a BW side. When I'm creating this, automatically backend database will be getting designed. That is called modeling. If you want to do the modeling, I need to use certain tools. These are the tools which will help you to do the modeling in a BW. Clear guys? Any questions here? Yeah, it is open for you now. You can ask me any questions. We have another 5-10 minutes, we can ask all the questions. Yes guys, you can unmute yourself. Uh, when compared to 7.4, uh, that is uh, in 7.4, some new data modeling concepts came into picture. Hybrid something. Uh, uh, yes. Hybrid provided some kind of uh, mm. name object I heard about. What that exactly? To the 7.4, they have most of the modeling objects. They have merged as a one single object. They are not going to use these many objects. Okay. That is a completely advanced level of you know the modeling tools they have come up with the new things, but you know most of the companies still they are using BW 7.0, and still a lot of companies they are using BW 3.5. So you should know it is a mandatory for all these things, especially from 7.0 to 7.3. Yeah. If you want to start learning directly into BW 7.4 new modeling. Still, none of the companies in uh, India, if you ask me that, very few companies upgraded to 7.4. So, this is a very important modeling objects which you have to understand, which you have to learn this. Then only you will understand what is the advanced modeling concepts available in 7.4, why they have created. Okay. Because you can understand this, okay, these many objects they are merged as one. See for example let's take BW 3.5. 3.5 we have a concept called update rules and transfer rules. They merged these two as in 7.0 they made this as transformation. Yes. There, there is no transformation concept in earlier. Now the transformation concept is come. If you directly start learning a transformation you'll get confusion what is this. If you know update rule transformation rule it will be very easy to understand. This is a logic. Okay? Yes. Any other questions, guys? Uh, Kiran, I have a question uh, regarding the BW layering. In that, you had said the source system could be a non SAP or SAP system, right? And yeah. in the figure, it is showing like a non SAP, SAP, and then SAP NetWeaver BW. So, yes. that NetWeaver uh, BW, is it a part of ECC or it is outside the ECC besides? It is not ECC, that is completely different. ECC is nothing but, see, you have a three names for your ERP system. Either you can call ERP or you can call ECC, you can call R by 3 server. Okay, all these three names is SAP, ERP only. Your NetWaver SAP BW is not a, your ERP, it is a BW system. NetWaver is a platform only. This is what we discussed. We designed this BW system on the, based on this platform. It is another BW system. 
So our BW system will become a data source for another BW system because it has data. Okay. Non SAP systems is all the database which is not SAP family that is called non SAP. Oracle, SQL, Microsoft, all. SAP is nothing okay. but your ERP. It's completely your ERP or you can call ECC or you can call R by 3. R by 3 stands for real time three tier architecture. What is a three tier architecture? In a server, it contains a three tiers. A database layer, application layer, presentation layer. The data will be there in the database layer. Then goes to the application layer, goes to the presentation. Three tier, one, two, three. We call it is a R by 3. From these are the places where I'm getting the data into my BW system. Clear? Yeah. Then I will start doing a modeling. One by one, one. I need to create this, I need to create this, I need to create this, 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 everything you need to create. That is called modeling. So we're going to learn okay. everything one by one. How to create this? Why should we create this? What are the steps to create? When I will create? After creating, what happens? How the data moves? <laughs> when I can see that? Where the data is particular location? For example, where the data is available in this all the layers? I can easily find out where the data is also. Okay, these are all things we're going to learn from the step by step. Yeah. Any, Dinesh, any questions? Um, pretty clear to me so far. Now is it good? It's clear. Now you need to understand only the modeling concept. If you are clear yeah. about the modeling, that is more than enough for me. Um, in fact, I've been quite exposed on the Microsoft front. Uh, the basics so far seems to be quite similar. I mean, it's not exactly the same. Um, but uh, yes, I mean, probably the word that will be used is like you have to map it and, and then try to yeah. see if that's going to be imported again and again on the same format and you can probably store it okay. and then just fill it with data and then import it. I think it's quite similar but it's not exactly the same. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a data warehousing concept. Yeah. yeah. It is most of the time it will be similar. 